Goldilocks and the Three Bears Once upon a time, there was a cheeky little girl called Goldilocks. One bright sunny morning, she went for a walk in the woods to find some flowers for her mother. As she was walking, she saw a charming little cottage with pretty flowers outside. She could smell something delicious coming from the cottage and went to take a closer look. As Goldilocks got closer, she noticed the front door was slightly open. She knocked on the door, but there was no answer. So she called out, is anyone home? But there was still no Even though nobody was at home, Goldilocks was so curious that she wandered inside the cottage. There, she saw three bowls of porridge on the breakfast table. She could see a big bowl, a middle-sized bowl and a small bowl of steaming hot porridge. Goldilocks was hungry, so she tried some porridge from the big bowl, but it was too hot. So she tried some porridge from the middle-sized bowl, but it was too cold. Next, Goldilocks tried the small bowl and it was just right. Mmm, yummy, this is delicious porridge, she said and ate it all up. Goldilocks was feeling quite full now and needed to sit down. So she crept into the next room where she saw three chairs, a big chair, a middle sized chair and a small chair. Goldilocks sat on the big chair, but it was too high, so she tried the next chair. She sat on the middle-sized chair, but it was too low. Then Goldilocks tried the small chair, and it was just right. She was really enjoying herself when suddenly... The chair broke. Goldilocks fell on the floor with a crash and hurt her bottom. Ouch! That hurt! she cried. All this commotion made Goldilocks feel quite tired and she felt like having a nap. She noticed the stairs and went up. When Goldilocks went upstairs she saw three beds. A big bed, a middle-sized bed and a small bed. Goldilocks jumped onto the big bed first but it was too hard then she tried the middle-sized bed, but it was too soft. Then she tried the small bed, and it was just right. It was so cosy and comfortable that Goldilocks fell fast asleep. Meanwhile, the three bears arrived back home from their morning walk to the shops. When they got back home, they noticed someone had been eating their porridge. Who's been eating my porridge? roared Father Bear. Who's been eating my porridge? cried Mother Bear. And who's been eating my porridge? said Baby Bear in a sad voice. And they've eaten it all up. They entered the next room and noticed someone had been sitting on their chairs. Who's been sitting in my chair? growled Father Bear. And who's been sitting in my chair and made a mess? cried Mother Bear. And who's been sitting on my chair and they've broken it? squealed Baby Bear. The three bears went upstairs. The beds were very messy. Who's been sleeping in my bed? said Father Bear in a big cross voice. Who's been sleeping in my bed? said Mother Bear disapprovingly. And who's been sleeping in my bed and she's still there? cried Baby Bear. Mother and Father Bear saw Goldilocks fast asleep in Baby Bear's bed. Goldilocks suddenly woke up. She saw the three bears staring down at her and got a terrible fright. She was so scared that she jumped out of bed, ran down the stairs and out of the cottage. She ran all the way home as fast as she could 
And that was the last the three bears ever saw of Goldilocks. called Cinderella. She had two older stepsisters who were always very mean and also she had to do all the housework. They never, never let her have any free time and a rest. She also had an ugly stepmother. And then an invitation arrived from the grand, from the prince. The three of them were so excited, but Cinderella wouldn't, wasn't allowed to go. Then Cinderella had to get all both of the girls ready for the ball and she was so sad she couldn't go so she didn't smile when she was, she was getting ready then they were going to put their dresses and makeup on they loved makeup and jewelry She ran out in the garden, garden crying. <laughs> then one sparkle came out. Bim, boom, bang. It turned, turned into, into a fairy godmother. godmother. Fetch me a pumpkin, Kin. a cat, and two mice. So Cinderella got a pumpkin, a cat, and two brownish whitish mice. And they magically turned into oh, a carriage with two beautiful white horses and the cat turned into a coachman. coachman the carriage was beautiful gold she was about to climb in but well, she said, I can't go in these. Then the fairy and godmother flashed her one and she turned into a beautiful lady. With a beautiful dress that looked just like the ugly stepsisters, except much prettier. Would you like it blue? blue. Or, or pink. pink? I like it pink. pink please then she leaved it there then she was about she climbed in and the fairy godmother told her that she had to leave before the strike of midnight otherwise she would turn into her frocks and her old rags then the prince said when she arrived would you dance? And she said yes. Then the clock struck midnight twelve. Then she, she ran home and she accidentally left her glass slipper then on the steps. And then she ran and then. Clothes turned into her ragged clothes and her 
Oh, and and she was all dusty again. And when, then, when she, and then, when she arrived home, she tried on a glass slipper that the prince gave her. The prince had been travelling through the whole of the town to find the person who the glass slipper fit so he could marry her. Then she put it on and it fit! The others were amazed. They didn't want to. They didn't want to. They were so jealous. The prince said, Will you marry me? And she said, Yes! So they both got ready for a lovely wedding. And they lived happily ever after the end. The Lonely Snowman Once there was a lump of snow. It really wanted to go, go, go. But you see, he couldn't though, for he was just a lump of snow. Then two giant boys came by. They were so high, they could practically fly. Oh, how he wished they would say hi, but they picked him up and he didn't know why. And soon he was a pile of snow. The boys had built him up, and oh, they gave him eyes and a mouth, and whoa, what an amazing pile of snow. But soon for them, it was time to go. The boys hadn't finished him. Oh no! Then a little flake of snow said hello, and told him of the man of snow. The pile of snow could go, 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 for he was now a pile of snow, and he went to search for the man of snow. Through woods and fields, he'd go, go, go. He searched and searched, but he could not find any snowman of that kind. Then he looked into the wind and saw a wood. Should he go in? He thought he should. In that wood, it was dark and scary. Hoo-hoo, said the owl, and made him wary. Was that a wolf, big and hairy? Suddenly, a rustle, as dainty as a fairy. He looked up to the trees up high. Oh my goodness, my, my, my! Out of the trees, a squirrel did fly, jumped on his head, and then said, Hi! Have you seen a man of snow? Whoa, 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 whoa! I haven't even introduced myself, so I'm a squirrel and my name's Bo. But Bo had not seen a snowman. He had far too many a plan. He gave the pile of snow two sticks to use as arms and not for tricks. He wandered on in hope of joy and soon he met a rabbit boy. He had many a carrot for a toy and he looked like a rabbit you shouldn't annoy. Have you seen a man of snow? Whoa, 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 whoa. I haven't even introduced myself so. I'm a rabbit and my name is Poe. In answer to your small query, I haven't seen one yet, dearie. Take my advice and follow this pose. And he promptly took a carrot and placed it as his nose. He hopped along and came to a cave where he met a snake called Dave. The snake slithered along his old cave pave and said, Little Snowpile, you are very brave. Have you seen a man of snow? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, I've already introduced myself, so I have a gift for me to show. He placed three stones onto his chest and off he went to follow his quest. He hopped along in deep despair. He thought he'd never be a pair. 
All he wanted was a friend to care, a friend to help him, and a friend to share. He continued on, and he saw a figure. As he drew closer, it got bigger and bigger. Excuse me, friend. I've travelled far, and I do not know who you are. I have a question for you, please. It's just for you among this breeze. Have you seen a man of snow? Whoa, 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 whoa! Of course, my friend, I have. I know that you were just a lump of snow, and now, in fact, you didn't know that you are now a man of snow. Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, there was a girl called Little Red Riding Hood, named after the beautiful red cape her grandma had made for her. One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother called her in from the garden and said, "Grandma just called. She isn't feeling very well. Will you take her a picnic basket for me?" "Yes, of course, Mummy." Said Little Red Riding Hood, "Please go straight to Grandma's, and remember, don't talk to any strangers on the way." Her mother warned her. Little Red Riding Hood skipped along the path that led to her Grandma's cottage on the other side of the woods. She made her way happily through the woods, enjoying the beautiful sunny weather and the wonderful smells of the sweet peas and lavender. Suddenly, a hungry wolf sprang out from nowhere. "Hello, little girl. And where are you going this fine sunny morning?" said the wolf. "To my grandma's cottage," said Little Red Riding Hood. "She's not very well, and I am taking her this basket of yummy food to make her feel better." "Hmm. That's awfully kind of you." Said the hungry wolf with a big grin. Hmm. How about picking a bunch of flowers too? He suggested helpfully, pointing at the colourful flowers all around them. What a great idea! Said Little Red Riding Hood. She'd especially love these pretty little daisies. As Little Red Riding Hood began to pick the flowers. The wolf ran as fast as he could to get to Grandma's cottage first. The hungry wolf knocked on the door. Who is it? Called Grandma. It's me, Little Red Riding Hood. He squeaked, pretending to be her little granddaughter. Come in, dear. The door's open," Grandma said, smiling. Grandma was very surprised to see a hungry wolf coming through her door. She immediately jumped out of her bed and tried to run away, but it was too late. The naughty wolf caught her and bundled her into the wardrobe. Yummy! I will have Red Riding Hood for lunch and Grandma for dinner tonight. Perfect. The wolf then pretended to be Grandma. He put on her nightdress, glasses, and shawl, and slipped into bed. A little while later, Little Red Riding Hood reached Grandma's house and knocked on the door. Come in, my child," said the wolf in a squeaky voice. As Little Red Riding Hood got closer, she noticed there was something different about Grandma today. "Oh, Grandma, you don't look at all well," she said. "What big ears you have!" "All the better to hear you with," said the wolf. "And what big eyes you have!" All the better to see you with. 
What big teeth you have! All the better to eat you with! The wolf growled as he jumped out of bed, picked up Little Red Riding Hood and put her in the wardrobe. Just then, Little Red Riding Hood's father, who was chopping wood nearby, heard loud noises coming from the cottage and went to investigate. He saw the naughty wolf, grabbed his tail, swung him around the room three times and tossed him out of the woods. The wolf never came back to the woods ever again. Little Red Riding Hood's father opened the wardrobe door and out came a very relieved Little Red Riding Hood and her grandma. They were all very pleased to be safe again. And Little Red Riding Hood and her grandma enjoyed a lovely glass of milk and some cupcakes. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. And eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. And eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Heads, shoulders. Shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes Shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes And eyes and ears and mouth and nose Shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes Knees and toes, knees and toes Knees and toes, knees and toes And eyes and ears and mouth and nose Knees and toes, knees and toes And toes, and toes and toes, and toes, and eyes, and ears, and mouth, and nose, and toes, and toes. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. And eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. And eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes.